Good afternoon, Holy Family. Before we begin Mass, please silence any electronic devices. Today's readings are on page 446 in the Missal. Religious Ed classes will resume on Wednesday, January 3rd. See the bulletin about the Pistons and Walleye games. The parish office is closed until July 2nd. Now let us call to mind that we are in the presence of God. Lord, we ask you for the grace to celebrate this liturgy well. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox set us before him bow, and he is in the major now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. He who won and calls you all to gain his everlasting home. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate our parish feast day. It's the feast of the Holy Family. And as we celebrate the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we also remember that all of us are God's family. All of us are called to share in that life of holiness. With gratitude for all the many exemplars of faith, hope, and love in our own lives, let's now call to mind our own sins and imperfections and ask God's pardon and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you became human for us and developed and were formed within a human family. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you surround us with bonds of love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our brother, and you are the one who saves us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless, and I have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and no one, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram aside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah, as he had said he would. He did for her what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac, Isaac to his son, of whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Sisters and brothers, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let his peace control your hearts, may his word in you ever dwell, may your lives reflect the whole. 
Holy Son of God. Alleluia. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout and awaiting the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my own eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at this very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee and to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we celebrate our parish feast day. It's the feast of the Holy Family. Even more than that, it's our five-year anniversary. It was back in 2019 on this date that our parish in this new form began. And if your family's anything like mine, when families get together, we always do two things. First, we eat. And we'll be doing that in a second here at the table. And then second, we tell stories. And so today, in lieu of a homily, I thought I would just tell you three. So first, if you were at the 10 p.m. Mass, you already heard part of this story, because this is about two oblates I know, part of my religious family, and this is Brother Francis and Father Wally. Both are retired. Father Wally's 87 years old, and he spent 60 of those years in Namibia, Africa, and he's about 95% deaf, deaf because he had polio as a child. Brother Francis is 85 years old, physically. Mentally, he's going on about 21, and he will tell you that. He loves all things, especially technological things. And for 14 years, I've been his personal help desk. So Brother Francis just got a new one of these. And he called me up last week, and he said, Christmas is coming. I know you're not busy. So Father Wally and I, we want to come. Yeah, I know, right? We want to come. 
I need some help with my phone. So we schedule it. He comes on Thursday with Father Wally, and Father Wally's here talking to the volunteers, and Brother Francis and I are sitting down. And he's just amazed that, you know, now you can look at the phone and it opens. And we were able to take his five password sheets with cross-offs and everything and put all those passwords into his phone. We showed him how to use email, how to use dictation. I'm praying to God this is going to save me hours of help desk time. So pray for me. It's probably not. But then we get done and we go out to eat and I'm driving them to dinner and, you know, we get out of the car and Brother Francis goes running in to get us a table at 3.30 in the afternoon, very busy time. (laughs) And Father Wally, who's pretty much deaf, he leans over the council in the front seat and he looks at me and he goes, I have a question for you. Why are you so nice to us? You ever had that moment in your life When, like, all of a sudden, God just becomes very present? Well, that was it. One of them for me. Why are you so nice to us? You've been in a situation this past week, maybe like I just described on either end. Why are you so nice to us? Just the tenderness, the vulnerability, the honesty of that question from this deaf 87-year-old I I sat with it for a second, and then I just said, you know, Wally, back in 2003, when I joined the Oblates, I made these vows. And one of the lines in our vow formula that we make before God says this, I give my whole heart to this religious family. And I meant it. We're family. No matter what kind of family you're in, isn't that what family does? We give our whole hearts, our whole lives, to each other. Second story. Last Wednesday, I was down around uh, Paulding, Ohio, visiting a parishioner who's down there in rehab because of insurance. And we're sitting and we're talking and she takes communion and she receives the host and then she shuts her eyes and, you know, she's chewing on God literally and she's in intense prayer. And then she opens her eyes and she said something pretty close to this. She looked at me and she goes, you know, It's a funny thing about communion. When we're younger, we don't realize how important it is. It even tastes kind of weird. But then when you get older and you can't get it, you crave it. You realize how necessary it is, how important it is, how necessary communion is for our lives. You know, I said I had an hour drive back to Adrian after that, so I was thinking about what she said, and I was again just thinking about the idea behind that word communion or Eucharist that we use. It's it's togetherness, mutual participation, sharing. Another word we could use for that, I think, would also be this idea of family. Because wasn't this also true? When we're younger and we always have our family and our friends around us, We don't realize how special family, communion can be. But then we get older, life happens, things change. We might get separated by moving or by death or by anything. And then we crave being together. Right now, even among us here, you know, there is some loneliness, remembering what it was like to be with others who are not with us this year. And it's sad this that we're not with them still. You know, that's the power of communion, the Eucharist, that we're going to celebrate on this altar in a few minutes. Because in communion, we believe that Jesus never comes alone. When we're standing down there and we say, body of Christ, we believe in that host is the Lord. We also believe there's everyone who is here present living now, everyone who ever shall live, and all those who live eternally in Christ. All of that's present when we say body of Christ. So today when you say amen and you receive the Eucharist, we don't receive alone. Our family, whether they're here, somewhere else in the world, or in heaven, are there. Our future generations, our grandparents, not not my grandparents, your grandkids, you know, are there. Everyone is there. That's what it means to be in communion.
All creation is united, joined with Christ. And when we say amen to that, we join in that union. How necessary and important communion family is in our lives. Last story. This happened at 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve. I was not in my best space. One of the ushers comes up before Mass, and he says, I just want you to know, Mike, there's a guy sitting over in the church on this side, and, uh, well, we, we think he's a little drunk. <laughs> Great. He's not hurting anyone. He said this because at 4 o'clock there was somebody outside hurting someone, and we already called the cops once. So he goes, we're going to keep an eye on him. I said, okay. I'm not going to lie. I was keeping an eye on him all the time during Mass too. And there were a few times during Mass he seemed to stir. During the Gloria, he woke up and he shouted out very loudly, that's right, team effort. And I swear, Nancy, like, pushed the crescendo pedal on the organ super loud. <laughs> I also saw every time we sang a Christmas carol, he woke up and he sang with us. Every time we prayed the Mass or I gave my homily, he was sound asleep. And then Mass ended, and he didn't want to leave. And several of our parishioners came up to him, and one offered him a hotel room, another offered to take him out for coffee and for food. And what struck me was how insistent these parishioners were, you were, in helping him. It was the total opposite of no room at the inn. Instead, what was being communicated was, there's a place here for us. There's a place here, too, for you. And in the end, he decided that he had stuff, he said, scattered all around the city, and he was going to get that stuff, and so he left. And I've thought a lot about this guy since, since that 10 o'clock Mass and what God was trying to teach us through his presence here. He was difficult. He was not lovable. And yet we made room for him, doing the best we could in a difficult situation. And perhaps that's the final lesson. You know, not everybody in our families or our workplaces or our communities is lovable. Some are very difficult. Some don't want help. Some don't want to be out of whatever circumstance or situation that we're, they're stuck in. And when I want to judge them, I'm just honest with myself because often I don't want to take the advice other people want to give me either. We may not be able to help others. They may not want us to help them, but we can make room for them because that's what community, that's what family does. We make room. There's a place here for me. There's a place here too for you. Here's the last thing. Today, Holy Family, we turned five. It's been five years. And all of us are here today, are online today, because in some way we decided, either right away or during these past five years, I give my heart, my whole heart, to this religious family, and I want to make this work. And it hasn't always been easy. But... And I think COVID has taught us this deep down. We all crave communion, union with God and with each other. And while some things have changed, there's one thing I think that has not changed about us and which I hope will always remain the same, that we firmly believe and profess that there's a place here for me, there's a place here for you, and there's a place here for us, because that's what we do here at Holy Family Parish. We are a people who are creating a space so that we can strive to live Jesus by celebrating the sacraments and being in communion with God and each other, we go forward together to form disciples in Adrian and beyond. Amen? Amen. Happy fifth anniversary, Holy Family, and may God be praised.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God has appeared on earth and lived among us in a holy family. We turn now to him with our prayers. That Christians practice kindness and patience every day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world value families, affirming all children will grow in wisdom and truly value the lessons learned from their parents, we pray. Lord, hear that families separated by war or distance be reunited in God's boundless love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That elderly parents be consoled and strengthened by caring and loving sons, daughters, and grandchildren, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That single people find welcome in our parish family and live out their vocation through lives of charity prayer, and service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For beloved faithful departed, at this Mass we pray for Rosemary Thompson, May the dead live in the fullness of God's glory, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the incarnation of Christ your Son and the sacrament of baptism, you've made us your adopted sons and daughters. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, hear the prayers we offer you today, and to continue to form us into a holy family for our good and your glory. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, her spouse, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on this feast of his awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he's appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love, 
And when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in Adrian, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, so that in a world torn by strife, we, your people, may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Francis de Sales, St. Catherine of Siena, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command informed by his teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, we have the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Glory to the 
taking the Eucharist to the sick or the homebound this weekend. Lord Jesus, we ask you to send your blessings upon all those in our community who are sick and homebound. 
Help them remember in this Eucharist they are united with you and with us for the salvation of the world, you who live and reign forever and ever. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share in their company forever through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.